Hi guys, Tony here from Tony Reviews. This week we're going to take a look at how I installed my new subfloor. As you can see it's uh, slightly raised from the existing level. What I'm going to do is take you through the complete process, you'll see some of the nightmares I faced, how I overcame them and uh, how we ended up with this nice solid subfloor. So without further ado, let's roll the b-roll. Okay, so I wasted yesterday, so I'm starting early-ish today. Um, yeah, it, it was a shame really, because yesterday was a really nice hot sunny day, and uh, today's forecast to be rainy showers, and it is bitter cold out there. So starting off with a cup of tea, and uh, yeah, it's gonna be floor day today. Um, debating, I was originally debating about the floor, whether to uh, not bother with insulation on the bottom and uh, just to lay a thicker ply and do all this stuff but I've decided against that I am going to insulate the floor I am going to batten the floor and I am going to use a 12 mil ply so once I drink this I'm going to get started but it is the first I've just cleaned the van out and it is the first time that I've owned the van that I've not had it full of stuff so it's nice to see it blooming clean and empty for once um, so yeah cup of tea and then we get on to it Oh, right, the van pretty much clean. <coughs> um, yeah, so I've got to take all the wall linings off, these boxes on the sides, give it a good old clean out, fill up any holes if there are any in the floor. I don't even know how the floor's bloody fixed. I don't know if it's, oh, there's some screws. Are they screws? Yeah, screws. All right. Um, it looks as though it's a 12 mil ply already. Uh, it's a bit spongy in places. As you can see you that. You can see that moving. So we'll have to have a little look under there and see what. But it's going to be battened out. So hopefully the battening will be uh, give that some more structure. So yeah, the van at the moment. Here we go. Right, little problem. Um, a lot of the screws, a lot of the bloody heads are just, you know, worn and then stripped out by trying to get them out. Um, as you can see, there's one there. And uh, yeah, when you try and get the drill in, they're so rusty and whatever else that, yeah, trying to get them out anyway. So oh, there's another one that I said, that's a good one, look at that. Um, so I'm gonna use a tool that I bought uh, originally for the, um, for the motorbike because one of the pins is stuck in the calipers and stripped out. Uh, oh, let me see if I can do this. So what I've got is this um, grab it tool. You've got all these little individual bits and bobs. One end, which is this end, you, sh you burr out the end of the screw and then the other end grabs it and should bite in and pull it out. Right, that didn't bloody work. So, I'm just going to try and drill it out. Right, well that's taken the head off. And that's actually plugging the gap, I suppose, in the... Because uh, they're drilled straight through the floor. You can see there. You can see daylight down there, so... That's now flush. I might um, leave that in, scurf it over and hammer right over it, like make it flush in the floor. Just plug in the hole, so uh, there's another one. But that grab it bit, I couldn't get it to work. Let's see it, that's off. Felt that go through. Right, 
Right, this is the first look at the floor. So it ain't looking in too bad a condition. Full of filth, obviously. Look at all the filth under there, which needs to be cleaned out. But yeah, it's gonna be a big old clean up. Loads of like, obviously that's where I've had to drill out the uh, slats. Hopefully I can use these boards as templates to uh, cut out my wood because um, they fit really well. Like if you look how well that fits around there. So um, yeah, I'm gonna use, obviously use these as the templates for the floor, which is good. So first section out. I don't even know how many sections are in here because you can't really tell whether it's lines in the wood or whether it's things and um, joins. I think it might be three sections, like one, two, and then one at the back, three. Uh, so yeah, on to the next bit. Right, this is where we are at the moment. Just drilling out the um, screws that are literally just welded into the floor because they're just so rotten. The heads are just gone, they're just completely stuck, they're so rusty. Um, so just drilling those out, but uh, yeah, there's loads of metal shards obviously everywhere where I'm, I am drilling out those bits. Um, this is, look, they're the screws that are still sitting proud, so I'm going to have to scurf them down to the level of this. Um, and then hammer right them. Any holes that I've got like that, I'm going to uh, fill and then hammer right over there's a nice little rusty one right there look at that but also they've just drilled straight into the wheel arches and things so all of that i'm gonna rub down and uh, hammer right and fill um but just a quick thing in terms of the battening so these are the ribs that are on the van and this is the uh lower floor and this is um this batten is 25 by 38 mil and uh yeah if you lay the batten on its side in the lower part of the floor it sits flush with the batten if you put it on its other side the flatter side they sit flush um so you can imagine if you're gonna run your battens a length up and down the van you can stick your 25 mil boarding in between and it will sit flush on this uh, either in or out of the uh, the flooring with these battens because they sit perfectly the same height which is good anyway the other thing is my poor little black and decker drill which was just my little home diy thing is pretty much dead i mean this van has literally killed that drill i bought my debauch impact driver which has literally been the savior of, of me during this van build it's done everything um but it's obviously an impact driver it's not a drill so this little black and decker is yeah dead i'm gonna need to get a drill at some point um yeah it's dying anyway down to the last panel i'm gonna get the last panel out then i'm gonna need to hoover it out sweep it out clean it out as in wash it wipe it all down before i can even get the battens anywhere near it um but yeah it's uh, it's coming along eh? right back to go and uh, borrow a drill because um yeah because this uh, the drill was completely dead reason for the goggles is there are metal shards everywhere i've got them all in my hands and they are really bloody painful so i don't want a chance to get any of my eyeballs so when it comes to scurfing down i'm going to use um my motocross goggles and uh yeah swapping drills and drilling out the rest of it so let's get on to it continue part two van all clean well it's clean as, oh, it's clean as you're gonna get um, 
I've still got to get rid of all these screws, these high points. And uh, what you know, this fan floor is not um, it's not flat. There's uh, quite a few little dents and high points, so I'm gonna have to tackle that when it comes to laying the beams and the battens. Um, because I don't want it to be higher in certain places so I'll have to work my way around that um, maybe you know instead of going on the top of a bit go in the divot of a bit and I might even be able to bang them down maybe with a hammer and a flock of wood bang them down a little bit flatter in certain places so yeah it, I've still got to scurf off the pins um, there, is a, there was a lot of metal shavings, so when I was washing it out, I was sort of not squeezing the sponge too hard because uh, I've already got loads of bloody metal splinters and they're really painful. Um, so I am going to scurf off now the uh, heads of the pins, give it a little uh, rub down in places where there's little bits of rust and things, get rid of them fill the holes and then hammer right the floor so i thought i was going to get to batten it today but it looks like i'm nowhere near battening day one full day is just stripping and cleaning head of the pin scurfed off and uh, yeah the good thing is it's actually plugging the holes what I'll do is look where I'm gonna put my uh, beams and then where there might be some old holes I might actually put some screws in them and screw them right down and scurf the heads off so it blocks them flat just so you know they're completely plugged uh, and yeah and then obviously the beams and the the boarding can go down and then it can be vapor sealed so yeah just scurfing them then but it seems to be working so that's good i thought they were too thick and it was going to take ages but um it's getting rid of them quick So this is what I was talking about. That's one of the screws that I re-screwed in. So that's uh, what it looks like when you've uh, painted over the screw. I might give it another little coat to be honest, just to give it a good old whitening coat. Um, and then I think while the floor's out, I'm gonna just spray the, uh, the back end of these bits, which are gonna be exposed. Um, all the doors and stuff are going to be re-sprayed and these bits and these horrendous bits are going to be re-sprayed and I've actually got the, the white um, for this particular model of van so I'm going to just get these bits done all of these nasty horrible bits that are going to be on show and uh, take the rubber off I've already cleaned it out and sanded it and prepped it it's just a bit wet at the minute out so um, I don't want to spray it while it's drizzly and rainy but this is the floor at the moment, so yeah, looking really good. It's a shame it's got my dirty footprints in here, but um, yeah. It's, uh, all of these are now completely flush. You know, there's nothing raised at all, so it's nice. Um, nice to get it nice and clean. So yeah, looking good. And I also tidied up this little bit while it was uh, out as well. It's gonna be covered, but it's just nice to get it all prepped. And know it's all nice and clean underneath. So yeah, this is where we are. Dirty footprints in the van, but um, looking good. What are you doing, Tom? Sick of flexing. Sick of flexing. <laughs> <laughs> I 
like getting arty on me. I'm just. <laughs> That's just like the wheel shot on the on the bike. Yeah. All right, this better be a good one because if I've got a bogey hanging or something. <laughs> Crazy worm. No, Will, not like this. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? It's getting worse. <laughs> not like this. <laughs> you saw me Is do that it. Enough? You just keep going more straight. You just go straight. <laughs> why? Like that. Just yeah, but why is the nozzle not on the wood? Just what? Put, uh, put the nozzle on the wood. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's oh, it. That's what you, oh, right, yeah. oh, that's why it was different. I was thinking, what the fuck? That is the crappiest sicker flex line i've ever seen hey like, man push the it'll, trigger it'll Let's be see. the strongest one <laughs> so <clears throat> this is the half a floor that me and will laid yesterday uh been curing overnight underneath all of the weight that we've just planted on top so gonna empty the van out get on to uh just making sure the wood fits I'm also going to varnish with an exterior wood varnish all of the boards before I lay them as well um, just in case there's any moisture or whatever in the van hopefully it's not going to get to the floor so yeah finishing off the other half cutting all the boards sanding them uh, varnishing them laying them I've also got a um, reflectix cover the wheel arches and I'm not sure I might carpet cover them as well talking about carpet covering oh uh, that was the carpeting job that we done yesterday and I think it looks bloody good it's looking nice so yeah it's definitely made a lot of a difference in terms of it feeling cosy like in this corner like when you're sat here and it's nice when there's a bit of blue sky coming through the skylight so yeah that's where we are and on to the stuff today right so I'm sort of trying to mark out roughly where I think things are going to go and how much space I'm going to have. I'm thinking the depth of the cupboards is going to be about 500 mil this side because the um, the metic fridge that I'm looking at and stuff like that they're 500 wide. I've put some extra rafters in just in case um, the cabinets are a little bit wider or you need to put some space behind the fridge to let it breathe so I'm accounting for that it should come to about there roughly i think ish so that would be 500 and then i'm thinking this side to do 450 um so 450 if you take the walls obviously going to be over there so 450 is going to be about here so i'll have to put another rafter here but if I had that at 450 and using this case and this box as the width of the cupboards, this would be your walkway. So I think that's quite enough sort of space to walk in, turn around, open a fridge door. Um, so I'd be happy if the cupboards were that sort of size. Um, I think when you go a bit bigger, I don't want to be too cramped. This is the thing, because the ones up here, I want around about 25 the depth around about 25 um, centimetres wide because uh, I don't want too massive a cupboard you know like you sort of feel like you're squashed in the van I want that I want to retain that sense of like airiness that you get in here which is lovely when you're in here and it's it's empty like this um, so you don't want to feel cluttered when you're in it but yet you do need the storage anyway this is a rough layout I'm going to have a default box to put my sandwiches in and that's a, is going to be my new fridge but um, yeah that roughly as a layout would be nice anyway if it does turn out like that maybe I should do this clip and then right at the end when I've done the whole van see if it turned out that way or is that just tempting fate but anyway it's looking good I'm happy with the progress so far it's the first time I've actually done any mapping out I've always had a rough idea of what I want, but now I'm actually getting down to the nitty gritty measurements. So it's the first time that I've done that. Boards are drying. Had their uh, second coat of varnish. And then I'll be able to get them in, insulate this part of the floor as well, um, and get the boards in, start getting the, the rest of it ribbed out, do the 
do the uh, wheel arches and that as well. Looking good. The sun's out as well. I just want to show you the cut. I bought this track saw specifically to cut straight lines because obviously jigsaws, you know, you can do so much. That's all I had. Anyway, 149 quid. This is not an advertisement for the Erbauer track saw or for screw fix, but 149 quid out of screw fix. Look how thin. Can you see that? How thin that little cut is that I needed to sliver off. So it was gonna need a little I mean look that's like Japanese sword fin look at that see it and then it goes thicker at one end and thinner towards the other so definitely worth the investment if you need it if you need to make straight cuts you need to make the cabinets you need to cut the floors definitely that plunge saw I would recommend moment of truth then uh, side top Let's have a look yep yeah. see told you well worth it well worth the money definitely good job So I've laid that, what I'm doing is with the last bit of timber that I've got is laying this bit so that this piece can lay there because that lays across that section. I've reinforced this area with a couple of extra battens because this is where the seating and where a majority of all the floor cupboards are going to go. So I've given myself that leeway whether I want it a little bit wider or a little bit skinnier um, that I can bolt into. The brown bits of wood are basically where the floor isn't completely straight and the battens that are meant to butt up, you know, 25 by 38 mil, where they're meant to butt up and all be sort of level, because the floor isn't straight, obviously there's low points and high points. And uh, that is exactly where there is a bloody join. And so there'll be a bit of give in the floor. So what I've done is put some extra 5 mil ply that I just had out of the scrap and cut lengths of them to build the level up of that beam to sit there oh yeah that's much better that was bobbling around so this is the progress so far of the uh, flooring it's semi finished I've just got a very small section at the back to do to uh, put the insulation in but um, I've run out of supplies uh so this is where we are at the moment everything sort of foil taped up to this point but what i should be able to do is get the first two boards in so this one that goes across here the little corner one bit there and the bit that goes down to near enough like the wheel arch then all i've got to do is put the last section in so this is the last section that i've got to put in once it's insulated so i'm going to get on and uh fit these two So, nice and flush, counter soak, and I've marked out where all the supports are underneath so I can screw into it. Right, floor, oh, done, well laid, uh, this is it installed, looking good. But yeah, it was a case of trying to level the floor as much as possible because there's a lot of ups and downs. Uh, it's not completely flat. So it was like spacing it, you know, filling it up 
uh, packing it out in places where it was lower than others obviously because it was a work van so it's divoted as expected but this feels pretty nice and flat now even along the uh, you know along these doesn't feel like there's any you know like so, you know no bits to sort of stop your feet it's uh, completely flat that is where we are nice and flat and uh, ready for the next point which is probably marking out where i'm going to have everything so yeah floor done finally took longer than three days i think materials time jigging around probably did take three full work days um but I, i'd spread that out primarily over the course of a week uh, just because of work and things like that but yeah yet again everything takes much longer than you anticipate but getting there so I hope you're finding the build series entertaining, informative, helpful if you're maybe doing your own build. Uh, I know I'm definitely enjoying it in just in terms of it's given me perspective to look back at the van when I first started and how daunting the whole thing was as well. So uh, yeah, hopefully this is going to give you some confidence if you're thinking about it to just get out there and do it. You will pick things up as you go along. You will adapt, you will learn and you will end up being successful. I'm very sure of that. There's a lot of help out there. YouTube is a fantastic learning tool and um, yeah hopefully like I said this is going to help you if you're embarking on that journey or maybe you just enjoy watching someone struggle every week with uh, new tasks but anyway um, if you are going to be uh, building your own subfloor there's a few little tips that I didn't really go through in the video and I haven't seen anybody else really mention either and it's only when you get down to doing it that you think for God's sake why didn't anyone tell me this um, in the floor of the van, once you've prepped it, you will notice there are seams that run along all the edges. So along all the edges, there's seams. Along the middle here, there's a seam. Uh, so when you come to laying your battens, um, uh, and obviously that they, they, you need to get them to sit flush because the board, the boarding is going to sit flush on top of that. Where the seams are, they're slightly raised. And so if you lay a batten on a seam, say across the floor here or up the edge there, it's not going to sit flush. Now what I did was I cut my battens where I knew a seam was going to be, I cut them slightly shorter so that I could put say a cross, a cross beam slightly off of the seam uh, and allow for that gap for the seam to run. Obviously there are other alternatives, you could use a thinner piece of wood, you could cut your wood down to sit on still on the seam, but I chose to uh, mark my where my bit beams were going to sit, cut the wood slightly shorter and then run the, run the beam off of the seam. So that's the first tip. Beware of the seams, dry fit your stuff out first and sort of work out before you do too many cuts where you're going to need to run stuff. The next thing would be before you actually go into uh, finishing your battening and insulating and vapour barriering, before you finish all that off, once you've laid your beams out, get your boards and dry fit your boards. So cut your boards ready to go so you know where they're going to sit because then what you can do is work out where the boards are going to join where they're going to butt up because you'll want to run beams across those joins so that you can screw both sections of both boards in down so that they are going to sit flush on a beam so dry fit your boards work out where you want to put any extra beams and then then get on with your insulating and your taping um, that would be my next tip and I think my final tip would be when you do lay your boards, um, just before you screw them all down, make sure you pencil mark out where all your beams are. That's just going to help you in terms of you know where they are. And if you are fitting cabinetry and beds and all that sort of stuff, you know where there's going to be a really strong point, you know, an extra thick point. If you needed to drive something in, um, you've got that extra bite, extra support. So yeah, hope you found that helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, check out the Let Us Live website. There is a discount on there if you use Tony Reviews when you check out. Safe riding, safe adventures, safe driving. We're nearly out of lockdown. So hopefully we can all get outside and do the things we enjoy a little bit more. I'll, I'll still be um, stuck in the van, cutting wood, no doubt, and dusting things off. Um, but yeah, safe adventures. I'll see you all next time. See you very soon.